So come on and and uh, get that done. Excuse me. Can I get everybody's attention for a few minutes? We got a special guest speaker coming forth to give a word tonight, and uh, I want to see full respect um, tonight. We can do that. Will that work? I'm not going to worry out with a bunch of announcements and go through all this routine. You guys have heard this nine million times, and so I just wanted to just highlight. Um, remind you again, if you don't use our case workers over here and get help to help yourself come out of the situation you're in, shame on you. <coughs> they keep telling you, we're not just here to throw another meal at you. We want to help you if you don't improve your situation. You know, a lot of us here have been there, we've been close to there, we've been, I, mean, I was one step away from home, I was living in a $35 a week room over here in East Washington Street 27 years ago, and it took me a year to recover from that. So, um, I was driving a cab, I mean, it took a long time to get back in the game. Father, we love you tonight, we praise you, and we worship you, we come to you as a family. We want to sit at your feet tonight, Father. We want to sit at your throne room. We want to bask in your glory. We ask, Holy Spirit, that you come here now in a mighty way. I ask in the name of Jesus, come, Holy Spirit. Fall among us. Touch our hearts. Jesus, thank you again for calling that cross, shedding your blood for us to give us access back to the Father. And Father, I ask now that you anoint Eugene as he comes forth. Have the words that come out of his mouth be from you. Holy Spirit, give him a special anointing. I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This is Eugene. Amen. Amen. Excuse me. How's everybody doing? Thanks. Well, one second. I want everybody to turn their cell phones off, please. Put it on vibrate. You would give me a few minutes, no speaking, no interrupting. You got to get right to the point. I want to pray real quick. I know he just prayed, but I want to pray again. Jesus Christ, my Father in heaven, Lord, we come to you through you to the Father in heaven, Lord. We pray right now that the mighty presence of the Lord, the Holy Spirit, will come in this room today, Lord, and touch everybody here in this room, Lord. I bind Satan, I bind the demons. I bind anything that, that hinders a person from giving his life to you, God, to be gone from this room right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, you gave us the right in the Bible to make a decision tonight, tonight for some people to make that decision that hasn't made a decision. We pray that today would be their day to not only make a decision, but to be set free from the bondages that they're in, Lord. We pray all these things. And we pray, Lord, we repent of any sins that's in our life, Lord, any sin that might hinder your words to come forth today, Lord, I repent. And I ask you to cleanse me with your blood and wash away all of my sins, Lord. Forgive me for all that I've done wrong and forgive everyone else in the mighty name of Jesus. You know, how many people here has been to jails? Jails, prisons? I've been there myself. I've been to prison like four or five times. When I was growing up, I went to Millersville State Hospital when I was 11, 11 and a half. Stayed there for four years. They said I was a, a psychopath or not a psychopath, but a, a split personality, whatever you call that. APD. One minute I'll be real good. The next minute I'll be real evil. You know what I mean? You know, it says in the Bible about a passage in the Bible where Lazarus was a rich man. Not Lazarus was a rich man, but there was a rich man and a, and a man named Lazarus, which was real sick and was laying at the rich man's gate, full of sores. But the rich man decided to bypass him every single day and didn't give him no food, no water, didn't nurse his wounds or anything. So it says the rich man died, right? And he lifted up his eyes in torment. Mm -hmm. He was in hell, but he looked up, and then it said after that, Lazarus died and was carried into Abraham's bosom in paradise. 
So then the rich man could see this. He could see paradise. He could see Lazarus drinking a glass of ice water. Because he said, let Lazarus dip his finger and bring, the, bring his finger just a drop of water and put it on my tongue where it will be. My, I will be in such torment. It will cool my tongue, right? But, but Father Abraham said in your lifetime you lived it up. Uh -oh. You didn't do anything the Bible said. Uh -oh. You did your own thing. And you thought within your mind since you had all this money and you lived so well that you was going to live in paradise forever. But when he got there, he found out it wasn't true. See, in a lot of people's life, it says in the Bible, there's a way to seem right to a man, but in the end, leads to destruction. You can live your whole life thinking that God's going to bless you when you die, but end up in torment just like that rich man was, doing your own thing. Being humble, Christ was humble when he went to the cross, was he not? He took a whipping. He didn't have to. He didn't even have to come here, matter of fact, because he didn't sin. We sinned, but he come to straighten it out. And because Abraham, because, I mean, Adam sinned, he gave the keys over to the devil, right? And the devil, be, be, uh, Abraham, become his slave because Adam decided to sin. When he sinned, he gave over the kingdom. He gave over his rights to the devil. Jesus Christ came to get them keys back from the devil. Amen. When Jesus Christ died, he went to hell, a place called Hades, took the keys away from the devil set the captives free from there to go where they're supposed to go, and he came back up as a victor, and then he gave the keys back to the church. Uh-huh. Come on So now. that we would have power again. Because before that, we didn't have no power. But now we have the resurrection power to be set free because of what God done. We don't have to live in bondage anymore. But then again, what do we have to do? When we come to Christ and we say, God, I'll do anything you want me to do. I'll serve you, Lord. I really mean it. But then God asks us something to do, and then we just turn the other way and do our own thing, right? Uh-oh. Because we want to do our own thing. That's natural. It's natural. But the natural man cannot enter the kingdom of God. The spiritual man is the only man that's going to enter into the kingdom. That's it. Your natural mind and all your <laughs> thoughts and all these things ain't even come, come close to heaven. But the Word of God, in the Word of God, the Word of God is what brings you through. If you learn the Word of God, and you get the Word of God in you, because the Word of God is alive. It ain't some book. When you read the Word of God, it changes you. When a person wants to be changed, and they tell me they want to be changed, I say, how much do you read the Bible? They say, oh, I get it about once a week, right? They don't want to be changed. You're telling me a lie. See, the devil's the father of liars. I mean, the devil's a liar. Was well, it from the beginning. Anybody that tells God a lot, you don't think God sees what you're doing? God sees what you're doing. He knows when you're playing games and when you're not playing games, right? He knows you and there's no way you're going to get away with anything. No way. Are we going to escape judgment unless we make a decision and become, and become honest with God? We can do what we want to. We can come and eat all we want to. I tell you what, you can be a full person and still go to hell. You can be the well-dressed person and tell all the lies you want and get anything that you want from here to Adam and still go to hell and burn for eternity. For eternity because it's real. You know why it feels like inside you're going to live for eternity and you ain't never going to die? Even though there's a great, there's a great real life on every block. And we just still feel like we're going to live to be eternity. You know why? Because eternity's in us. We're going to live regardless if we're good or bad. We're going to live. Because we've got a life-given spirit that cannot die. And we're going somewhere. The decision we have to make today, it says in the Bible, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. There's only one way in. And, and if people don't believe in the, in the Lord Jesus Christ, that's the only way that God gave us. If we don't believe in that, it's just like saying you're in a water and you're drowning and somebody throws your life right. You're saying, I don't need that. I got this, right? But you don't really have it because you're going to drown if you don't take that right. So if you don't take it today, you're going to drown because... You know, it says in the Bible, when a preacher preaches the Bible and you don't believe it, you're damned. What says in the Bible? You become damned by what you do, what the decision that you make can either damn you or save you. Like I said, I've been to prisons. I've been to central states. I've been possessed by devils. And God set me free. Set me free. I'm here today to preach to you because I'm free. Just went through the second year of Bible school. Free. With no education. How's that possible? 
No education, didn't even know anything about the computer or nothing, and went through uh, two years of Bible school, got 